just waiting to hear from the other participants in the capture. What would be his surprise when they were reported that there had been an encounter and communication had suddenly stopped? The minutes passed and El Fantasma didn't waste them. And since he couldn't resign to the military there on the road, he then began giving them special treatment, since he hated the military because he said they and their people always crossed the line. And they committed many abuses. So he took the initiative and started getting even. He did all sorts of things to them. René told him it was better to leave them alone. But since El Fantasma had more rank and seniority than René in the organization, obviously he didn't listen to him. For this, the idea of trying to make an exchange was considered. Once the military showed their IDs and stated their ranks, it was known they were prominent members. And that's how the negotiation began, but on the Sam time. Another negotiation was taking place in the same way both were to exchange and release Menyo. One was through Yoma's contacts with the military and the other directly. A call was made to the Ninth Military Zone. And the number was given by one of the detained military personnel. And the person who answered the call in the Ninth Military Zone was told a message that was meant for the general of the military zone, that they had four Special Forces soldiers captive and wanted to make an exchange. Otherwise, they were going to give the resign to the military operators. It seems like the person on the line didn't quite believe it and didn't give it the importance it deserved, so they proceed to give the identification numbers and names of each soldier for verification. And so indeed, they were able to verify that those military had gone out to carry out an operation. Well, yes, the verification took place. And immediately began to negotiate. The Zone General couldn't afford to lose four high-ranking members of the Special Forces. But he made the attempt in vain to get the people from Yoma to return the military. Because otherwise, the force... I mean, the entire army's force was against them, and that it wouldn't end well. That they better reconsider and release the military personnel. The people from the Telcar said yes, but to release Menyo first. And the general said that he couldn't, because the arrest of Menyo was already registered in the Sedina offices, and many people already knew about it. So he couldn't be freed. The Telcar did not agree and pressured them, and we're going to say it just like that. Also, they asked for favors to make the general reconsider, and in the end, he chose to grant Telkar's request. Thus, an agreement was reached, and the military were asked to return Menyo to the vicinity of El Salado, and that the four soldiers would be released in the same manner. Everything had gone in the best way possible. There had been no resignations. And I believe no one was injured on either side, but as nothing can be perfect. So, there was the detail that El Phantasma had given them the special treatment, but it hadn't been just any simple special treatment. Not at all, but it was very harsh, and even one of the soldiers stuck a stick you can imagine where, leaving them very physically hurt. Because he thought that in the end, they would be given the resignation, which, well... It didn't happen. Well, the exchange was made, everything went fine, Menyo returned to El Salado, and the military personnel were released. But everyone was injured, and the general was furious. Supposedly, everything was fine, and it would be as if nothing ever happened. But since they sent him his soldiers all beaten up, the next day the operations began, and the first place the soldiers busted into, which do you think it was? Obviously, the office at Ella Cruz, where the military had been. How did the army find out where they had been held? Because that's where the call was made to the Ninth Military Zone, which is why they tracked where that call was made from, and how one of the soldiers had spoken. Well, that was the first point. So things didn't just stay the same. All because of what El Fantasma did to the military. The military burst and secured that office on Ella Cruz. 
and they began conducting operations at various points in the San Lorenzo Valley, since they were extremely upset about what had been done to their companions. But don't think it was just about the treatment they received, but rather that boys who had participated in the operation, to catch the military, they had kept their tools and never returned them, I mean the shorts, because the long ones were indeed returned. All of them, but do not think that the long ones returned at the same time as the military. No, no, did so, since the military personnel had been released. Later, the military called asking for their equipment to be returned too. That's how it was. They picked them up, but only the long ones. And some Takor. I believe two Takors never came back. Well... One of those Takor was a 45, and it carried by a young man who worked for El Licenciado involved in the operation. Military personnel detained him between the Kila Zone and La Loma. There, they secured a lot of gear, long rifles, Takor, magazines, vests, potato launchers, and the young man was detained, and all the seized items were presented. Well, the attorney eventually managed to get all the charges dropped. Of possession, there was only one of the charges that could not be removed, and it was that of that taco, because it was charged as theft to the nation. So look at this, the pineapples and the potatoes and the long tubes. He also carried a 5.7, and all of that was taken away, only the charge of the 45 was left. And it was because of that that he spent several years in prison, as it's a crime the government doesn't let you off easily for. That's why whenever something happens with army elements, they can't lose their tool. They could lose an arm, a leg, but not their tool. In fact, there have been many complaints because the soldiers complain. They don't care about the lives of their subordinates. And to them, a tool is worth more than the life of their members. Because, as I tell you, they are not allowed to lose. If they do, they get into a huge problem. It could involve going to jail for losing his work tool. There is something very curious. Years before this event happened, one time Menyo stopped Echo the One. I just told you about because he was in a car, really drunk, burning rubber and causing chaos there in El Dorado, and El Menyo. He was also very drunk, drinking with Adolfo. Because they had been at the Crust de Alota drinking early, because there, there, they had a little field of grass that was about 500 hectares. For that reason, people joking around called La Cross of Ilota, like La Cruz de Mota. Because don't think the field was hidden. No, not at all. It was on lands by the roadside where people passed by and anyone could see them. The field was so large that they used crop dusters to spray it, and it was no secret to anyone that what was being cultivated there was weed. Why? Because the military back then were bought and were paid for protection so they wouldn't destroy the plantation. All right, friends. So that was the story behind that song, but now I'm going to share some extra details to get to know the character better. But as you've already heard, that two people were arrested, but one of them did manage to get down from the military vehicle when they were already taking him tied up. I'm talking about the donkey. Well, from what I understand, the donkey, because of that action of escaping from the military and jumping a car through the window, it was really amusing to El Yoma, so he began to get him closer. And now he's one of Yoma's good guys, actually. I think the donkey is an ex-military and has a brother, Cleto. I think he was in the military, too. Well, those two have power inside Yoma's company. And they have people under their command. They have their groups and are fighters. It's easy to spot the donkey since he's very tall and stands about six feet six inches. The donkey is very responsible. It seems as if he were still an active military. Since he doesn't use drugs or drink, the donkey and Cleto are always the first to jump in. And yes, they have quite a lot of people. The only downside is that Cleto really enjoys drinking a lot and it's kind of heavy, but oh well. 
Just so you know, it was because of the donkey that everyone found out about the four for one deal. Desi or so, that it was the military who had taken Menyo. I think it's important to recognize it, because that's not talked about. I don't know if you've heard that Menyo. Well, he had a brother, because he has already passed away. They called him the Wizard. In fact, he even has some Corridos. His name was Mauro Noriega. Well, he had quite a bit of money, worked very hard, and moved a lot of merchandise. He had his shipments. Very smart guy. He was the one who actually had money and financially supported Menyo a lot. Since Menyo does not work hard, nor does he have a lot of money, what makes him important and recognized is that he works for the Yoma. He's the one in charge of keeping the whole area checked where the man with the hat moves. He's the chief of communications of Yoma. Regarding all points, he's the one who watches over the area and keeps an eye out for government interference or anything suspicious in their zones. But he's also aggressive, always carrying his police badge on his belt, and every ten minutes he takes a hit. He can't be without it. Always carries his little spoon or a pen cap that never fails him. But he also has his flaws, like everyone else. And he has one that is very, very big, that I will tell you about later, because it is very interesting and very dangerous for his own family, for whom he works, mostly for the son. But I'll leave that for another episode. Now I'm going to tell you a story about Menyo, so you can see and understand what the old school is like. Or the old guard, because many talk about and mention it in the corridors, acting all-knowing. Talking as if they know, but they don't even know what old school means. This is a very regrettable fact. So, I won't go into details. I'll just mention what happened many years ago. Some guys who worked for Menyo were really drunk and crazy around the Christmas season. You see, between Christmas and New Year's Eve. Well, well, these guys handed in a resignation to another guy. Around the ranch Pueblos Unidos, a big fuss was made because the news spread a lot and it gained a lot of importance because, sadly, the boy was about 15 years old. And so it turns out that the young man's father was known by El Yoma, and he asked for the favor to Yoma. And Yoma asked Menyo to hand over those responsible to the dad. And so, despite the pain it caused to Menyo, he proved it. Saw that they had made an injustice. And just as he received the order, he carried it out. He delivered those responsible to the father of the young man. Yeah! Yeah! He handed them over, tied to the truck seats with a wire, but alive. And the dad took care of giving them the resignation, and that's how it ended. But just to show you, this is what I mean by the old guard. Before, what goes around comes around, even if they were someone's people. If that person had done something wrong, or something wrong, no way. It wasn't forgiven and had to pay an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And not like now that a lot of the elements that many organizations have been working with commit a series of injustices, thefts, all sorts of things. And the bosses, instead of setting things straight and disciplining them or setting an example so others don't follow that path, what do they do? Quite the opposite. It seems they are being congratulated. And the more wrong things they do, the more power they are given. That's why everything is a mess everywhere right now because no one wants to take charge. That's why it's said that in the old school, there was some respect and much better things than what we have today. So, you know, if you want to make a corridor, make it about these kinds of things so people realize and become aware of these events that are not okay. I don't hold it against them. It's not right. But at least it shows that injustices aren't endorsed. Well, that was the story of the 401 Corrido. And some extra interesting facts for you to get to know the Compa Menyo better. Well, as I mentioned in one of the previous episodes, 
He was actually the one who resigned El Bravo. And in another episode, I'll share a story about when Ivan thought Maño had set them up. And there was an uproar. Ivan and his brothers ran scared and jumped into the armored truck they had. Upon seeing Eloso, one of the licenciado's bodyguards. But we'll save that story for when we talk about the conflicts between the Chapitos and the licenciados. All right, friends. We've reached the end of this episode. I hope you liked it and learned something new. And don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and join if you enjoyed this episode to keep bringing you the true stories of the Corridos. We continue to work very hard to keep pleasing you with the topics you ask for. Follow us on our social media. And you know it, the unique and real narrative of the Okran world is only found here. See you in the next episode. Thanks, and see you next time.